Hey everyone, welcome back to Sarah's Kitchen. I hope you're doing really well. Today we're gonna test a recipe, or more like a concept. We're gonna be making vegan fish out of banana blossoms. That's what we've got right here. I found these in cans at my local Asian market. You can find them in the same area where you'd find young green jackfruit. This is the flower of the banana plant. It does not taste like bananas at all. From what I can tell, it has a pretty neutral flavor, kind of like uh, canned artichoke hearts and a similar texture too. It's similar in structure to jackfruit and that it has like layers. So when you prepare it in a certain way, it can kind of mimic the texture of flaky fish or like pulled meat. So I'm gonna be using these in place of fish in a beer battered fish and chips recipe. I'm very excited. I'm gonna try them two different ways. These ones are straight out of the can. I just drained and rinsed them and patted them dry. And then I also wanted to try them with a little bit of a, like a savory fishy marinade. So I drained these and I put them in this container with a couple pieces of kombu, which is a type of kelp, and then a couple of dried shiitake mushrooms to give that umami flavor. And those two ingredients I like to use in my vegan kimchi because a lot of traditional kimchi includes like fish or shrimp paste. And those ingredients together, that combination of flavors, kind of helps boost that, that fishiness, that ocean flavor, and the umami. Are you coming in? I'm coming in. We're gonna have a, a sous chef. Oh, hi! So do you know what's going on? I said hi, she didn't answer. Hi. Do I know what's going on? Yeah. Um, I kind of know what's going on. You marinated that, and now we're gonna batter and fry it. Smell it. It's real fishy, isn't it? And mushroomy. So. It's very mushroomy, yeah. I yeah. get mushroom more than fish. No, I have the feeling that the marinade, the kelp specifically, is gonna actually gross me out a little bit, because oh, yeah. you remember um, beginning of this year, end of last year, I can't really remember, I made the fish sticks oh, yeah, yeah. as a recipe test for the Miyoko's uh, yeah. homemade vegan pantry cookbook. She has fish sticks and you add kelp powder to those. Ooh, that, it was like too realistic. Do you know what I mean? Like too fishy. You could fish stick that recipe in the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a little traumatized by that. And that's why I wanted to try it also with the plain banana blossoms. Oh, uh, these are not marinated. Just beer batter. Yeah. Gotcha. Cause smell these. These are like pretty neutral, right? It doesn't smell like anything. Yeah. So I don't smell banana or blossom. So we've got all the ingredients here for a pretty simple, or maybe it's not simple, beer batter. I read a bunch of different recipes because I've actually never beer battered anything. Have you? Mm -mm. I haven't, mm -hmm. I haven't no. done a lot of deep frying in my life, which probably for the better, but a lot of beer batters call for eggs and we can't eat those. So I hope this is going to go well. Hold on. We can eat eggs. We choose not we choose to, not to reduce to. <laughs> the suffering of animals. Okay. So we've got all-purpose flour here. <clears throat> uh, you don't have to add spices, but I'd like to. So I've got some paprika, some garlic, and onion powder, just to, you know, make it taste good. And not bad. <laughs> <laughs> good rather than bad. That's good. And then I saw, you know, mixed opinions on whether baking powder belongs in your beer batter, but I'm gonna add a little bit because Alton Brown does, and I... Love and respect him? I respect him. I, I wouldn't go so far as to say I love him. Yeah. He seems a little cold, cold hearted. We lo I love, I love him in a, uh, strictly platonic. Yeah. A very detached way. <laughs> I like the concept of Alton Brown. I was going to say Elton John, Elton Brown <laughs> existing in the universe. Elton Brown and Alton. Alton John. Wait. Yeah. 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 There's a lot. That of was hard there. to say. So we're gonna whisk all these things together and before we add the beer, I'm actually gonna dredge all of our banana blossoms in this. The dredge will just help it, uh, help the batter adhere a little bit. Oh yeah, explain this beer. I don't know anything about beer. I really don't like beer. I especially don't like IPAs, which is the kind of beer he likes and this, always has in our house. This is not an IPA. Tell them about it while I heat up the oil. You know, I don't know much about it. It's uh, made by Boulder Beer Company. Um, it is called Fest Beer Hell Style Lager. Hellas? Hell, hell? Hells? I, so I think it's like a, I think it's like a fall kind of uh, Germany. Beautiful can. Mm -hmm. It tastes like fancy Budweiser. I don't think it goes past fancy Budweiser. I actually, I, I like it. Yeah. Because it's not too much. It's not too skunky. That's my no. grievance with a lot of beers. Well, it's not hoppy at all. Yeah. There's like not a hop inside. <laughs> not a hop to be had. Okay. So dredging it first. 
and uh, we're gonna just do this like kind of unceremoniously. Okay, so when I was pulling these out of the cans, I tried to not uh, like wreck them. I tried to keep them intact. Um, they look like horseshoe crabs. What are those? You know what a horseshoe crab is? No. Hold on. Where would I have encountered those? In the ocean? I don't have many oceanic memories. Right. This is a little gross, right? This looks a little bit like a Muppet. Ew. Or like- Look! What's that Pokemon? Tangelo? Tangela? Oh yeah, the big blue pin- yeah, yeah. not- Tell me if you see it. What are we doing with these? Do you need- no, you're putting them back you in You can there. dredge those and just stick them back in. I mean, if you wanted to, you could set up a separate little dredging station, but I figured, like, let's just use the dry ingredients we're gonna use for the- for the batter, so you we took have me from my mommy. Fewer dishes to clean. Sorry, <laughs> that beer is really, really hitting me. That one sip. Are you trying to get it like in the flaps? Uh, I'm not that committed to it. Okay. You're being really dainty about all this. Mm -hmm. Look at that. This is like the center, the stalk. Texturally, this is a little bit more tender than jackfruit. I, like one would think they could be used interchangeably in this recipe because they both have similar structures, but. You know jackfruit has pieces that are kind of fibrous and chewy, mm -hmm. and we have the seeds in them, and a lot of people just cut those out and discard them. These don't appear to have that. So I think it'll be overall more tender. As far as the chips goes in this fish and chips recipe, I'm not making them from scratch because it seems like a lot of work. <laughs> it's not like so. this is my job or anything. I'm gonna be using uh, Orida brand shoes. No, I didn't get shoestring fries. I got steak fries. Steak fries because typically I prefer the shoestring fries because my all-time favorite fast food fries, which I can't have anymore, are from McDonald's. And um, I just honor the shoestring. But I feel like for fish and chips, you really need those thick, meaty fries. fries. Okay. How much do you eat this? How do you know when it's hot? Good question. I know for a fact that at one point we owned a deep fry thermometer because I bought one specifically to make Lauren Toyota's apple fritters. Right. And I cannot find it anywhere. I'm guessing I, you dug through we this? We may have like, it just got displaced during our move. Ready? So how do you know that when it's hot? How do you know? <clears throat> I'm actually just gonna like test a, a little piece of batter, I think. Okay. Ideally, this would be 375 degrees. I mean, I think it matters a little bit less because we're not cooking fish, so we don't have to necessarily worry about yeah. internal temperature. I don't know. So you just add the beer to it? Yeah, we're doing this unscientifically. Hmm. I'm just gonna add the beer to the remaining dredge mixture until we reach a texture we like. It's so foamy. Yeah. So bubbly. It actually smells really good. Are you a big fish and chips fan? Uh. If you were to if you were to have asked me that before I was vegan, I'd probably say like, eh, not really. But like now, I could really want fish and chips. Yeah. I loved cod. Cod. And tilapia. Oh. So plain and flaky and delightful. Yeah, I loved fish and chips. Yeah. I just remember going to this one specific spot in the town where I grew up during Lent. All right, we'll go for it. Let's just test a little piece. It's a little nub. I'm really scared. It's gonna why? explode. Why would it explode? Well, I don't want to lose our eyes. Ask yourself why it would explode. It's hot oil. It's not hot enough. Good day. Cute! They say that one should not use paper towels to blot off the excess oil. They say instead you should use a drying rack. Not a drying rack. Why do I keep calling it that? A cooling rack. A cookie mm. cooling rack so that the oil drips through and doesn't get held against the crispy, crispy batter. It's beautiful. It really is. I do sense that this needs to be a little thinner. Now, a lot of recipes actually recommend that you make the batter like at least an hour ahead of time or even overnight and allow it to sit in the fridge just so that everything absorbs fully and the flour is fully hydrated, but I don't think it's strictly necessary. This coming from me, someone who never beer batters anything. Okay, ready? Wow, it's beautiful. It, really it looks is. like a little fish. Ow. All right. I Why did I touch it? Why did I, I think it wouldn't be hot? Oh yeah, I'm gonna let the excess drip off for a second. Just make sure you place it in the pan away from you, so you don't get oil in your in your face. Whoa. It's spl it's splattering. I'm gonna give it a little flip here. All right, are you ready to try this one? The little deformed boy. Mm -hmm. Whoa. 
Whoa. Is it good? Yeah. Mmm. That is so good. I mean, we didn't really get a good chunk of the banana mm. blossom. I, I was going to say fish, so I put quotes, but then I said banana, banana blossom. blossom. <laughs> Alleged banana blossom. It's actually fish. We're calling it banana blossom. <laughs> we got fish in a can. I actually haven't given myself enough room in this pan, pot, saucepan, saucepan, saucepan. <laughs> wow, it's so attractive. It looks like fish and chips. Oh. Huh. Wow. Well, it just looks like fish. Right. <laughs> Oh, it's done. I'm going to hit it with a little salt when it comes out, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely do that right when it comes out so that it actually adheres. Sticks. Wow. That's fantastic. Got a little stickage here at the bottom. Stickage. Okay. We just have to remember which ones are marinated and which ones haven't been. Yeah, that first one was a little too big. Literally puts it in the opposite way that I told everyone to. Yep. I'm fireproof. It's sticking Ugh. to the bottom. Yeah. My oil isn't deep enough. Don't do what I'm doing. Don't make my mistake. Use a big pan. I just didn't want to heat up an entire vat, vat of oil because I know we're not going to use it afterwards. Wow. We're going to have to throw this pot out. This is really fantastic. It is. The batter is so good. We're back and everything has been fried while well, we were doing the different batches of the banana blossom fish and the fries we had the oven at 225 just to keep it all crispy and warm and uh so we've got it with a little bit of lemon to squeeze over and some homemade vegan tartar sauce that i made yesterday or two days ago so yeah. it's had some time for all the flavors to meld this i'll put the recipe for down below but it's just mayo there's some dill pickles. You could mm -hmm. use like sweet pickle relish if you wanted to. A couple of- uh, Capers? Yeah, like two tablespoons of capers that I just kind of coarsely chopped. Some lemon juice, salt, pepper. Yeah, I think that's about it. I never really knew what was in tartar sauce. I made it yep. taste like that, but I've always loved it. Yep. So um, we kind of massacred this already just for the sake of photos. I wanted to get <laughs> all the, the B-roll and stuff, but we're gonna taste it now. Let's try this one first because this is the one that I know is mushroomy. This is, that, is the marinated one. one. I'm, I don't think so. Here. Ooh. So we're noticing that as we're pulling it apart, we're seeing these tiny little like threads of. Yeah. It looks strange. Like looks I thought like there was like a cat hair or something. Which is funny because we don't have a cat. A, a Melvin hair. But it's actually like. <laughs> I don't know. It's like. Yeah. It, it's a weird thing I happening. Don't. Yeah, go ahead and dunk. Okay, eat? Yeah, go ahead. That crunch. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, once you put tartar sauce on something, mm -hmm. most of the flavor is masked. It's hard to make fish, though. Yeah. I get where they're coming from. It's not from, bad, yeah. But it's definitely not that fish-like. It's not firm enough to be fish. There's no protein in it. Mm-hmm. It is really good though, I think. It is, yeah. I wonder if there's some way to hybridize this with seitan, you know? Right. Like, instead of dredging it with the flour, dredge it with seasoned vital wheat gluten or something. Yeah. So that in between all of those layers, there's some protein, some mm -hmm. structure. Because like right now it's good. This would make like a good appetizer or something, but it's not really a full meal because there's, there's no protein. And there's definitely a vegetable inside of that. Mm. You know, it's like mm -hmm. jackfruit. When you yeah. get to the base of the leaf mm -hmm. or the blossom, fries though. Yeah. You know, the um, the marinade flavor is not really overwhelming me mm -hmm. in the way that I expected just because- I don't really taste it. Yeah. I don't know, this is really good, but as a fish substitute, I'm not sure. I feel like anything could be made to be reminiscent to fish if you beer battered it and put it with tartar sauce. Yeah, I agree. I think still your best bet if you're missing fish is the Guardian mm -hmm. Fishless Flays. Mm -hmm. We have some of those in our fridge right now. It's a fun concept. I agree. We're going to eat this. I've still been wanting to try deep fried calamari made out of oyster mushrooms. Mm -hmm. and I feel like that texture is pretty convincing for the squid, but as far as just fish goes, yeah. It's like jackfruit. It's more tender than jackfruit and it doesn't have the weird briny flavor. Oh. 
that I feel like some people complain about with jackfruit. Mm -hmm. You know, like you rinse it and you rinse it and it, there's still that hand briny flavor. Mm -hmm. This really tastes like nothing. Like mm -hmm. absolutely nothing. That is true. Mm. Fries with lemon. Mm. You only get that when you make fish and chips. Mm -hmm. Lemon fries. Good combo. I feel like some bites are a little more convincing than others. Some bites I stay uh, well, I kind of can't stop eating it now because it's literally Deep fried. crispy beer batter. It's fries are taking me on a journey. Hmm. Thank you so much for joining us for this recipe test. Let me know if there are any other weird vegan substitutes that I should try out. Any viral recipes you'd like me to try out or veganize. I actually have a lot of junk food recipes I've been wanting to try out mm. on this channel. My stomach hurts. No? Too <laughs> much too fast. No? No. I think your stomach ache might have less to do with this and more to do with the fact that you pre-gamed it with chicken nuggets and buttered pasta. Gotta get those games. Gotta get that boom boom boom. Can we go take Melvin for a walk? Mm-hmm. Walk off some of this uh, oil? Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, listen to our music, listen to our podcast. I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>